Hey, 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 Owls fans. We are here with, of course, you know now the man to my right, first year basketball coach Rob Lanier of our Rice Owls. Good to meet you. How are you? Whirlwind few days, I imagine, huh? Yeah, it's been, it's been quite a whirlwind for sure, but uh, I'm doing great. Excited yep. and uh, fired up, ready to go. Yeah, first off, family, most important. Uh, tell us about your family and uh, how they've supported you here, not only in this transition, but uh, during your coaching career. Well, you know, my wife uh, is a Cornell grad, so she's the smartest one in the family <laughs> so far. And, um, you know, she was a, a medical school graduate and, and a practicing doctor. And then my son Emery came into the world and I was embarking on a on a coaching career. And she put that aside to support what I was doing. And and uh, and then 18 months later, Kai came into the world. And so she became a full time mom. And uh, she's been uh, very, very supportive and been an absolute rock throughout all of these uh, opportunities. And uh, uh, my son, Emery, uh, um, came down to Rice and Davidson for his college decision, took an official visit to, with, with Scott, was recruited by Chris Kreider. And so uh, he spent two years at Davidson and came to play for me at SMU. Uh, and my daughter, Kai, is going to finish her uh, her college degree at SMU. So uh, we've been together in Texas for a couple of years and we're looking forward to being at Rice together. It's been a wild last week or so with you. I can't begin to imagine, but when it when it came down to knowing you wanted a coach still, what attracted you to Rice? And was there anything Tommy said that said, hey, I've got to get down here or that you already knew about Rice that, that really attracted you to here? Well, you know, I, I spent six years in the state um, I've known Willis Wilson and Mike Rhodes and Brent Scott and Carlin Hartman. And, uh, you know, I've, I've followed Rice over the years through my association with Texas and recruiting in the state. Um, and there was never a question about whether I wanted to keep coaching. It was just a matter of opportunity because we felt like we were ascending and we had some unfinished business. And um, but I wasn't in a position where I had to do anything and I wasn't looking for anything. Um, and on Friday of last week, my wife said, what about rice? She had been on an official visit with my son. And I said, I don't know, but it was the most random thing. And the next day I got a call from Tommy and things sped up from there. But the biggest attraction was Tommy, his disposition, his vision, and the level of energy himself that he brings to the table. Um, there was a level of alignment that, uh, that I wanted to learn more about. And, you know, Dr. Reggie and I spent some time together, uh, our wives and the four of us uh, in Vail, Colorado last year at the ACC, uh, AAC meetings. And uh, so there was, a, there was a connection there that I wanted to know more about. And, and Tommy was a great bridge for that. Mm -hmm. So fans want to know, hey, what type of style are we going to see? Mm -hmm. I mean, we remember the, the hurting SMU put on us a, a few a couple months ago or weeks yeah. ago, but um, will it be the same? Is it something you kind of, from day one, we will play like this or what type of style will the house? Be? Well, we, we're going to have to build a roster first. Um, but the one common denominator will be that we will become one of the best defensive programs in the country. That will happen. Um, how we play offensively oftentimes will be dictated by the skill set of the players on your team. Um, but the defensive stuff won't be negotiable regardless who's on the team. So we're going to be good in that area. We can project that today. Um, we need to add some shooting. Um, I got to add some ball handling. And if we get the players that fit the way I want to play, um, it'll be on offense fast and we'll be in attack mode, much in the same way as we'll be on defense. We, a lot of times when people start talking defense, it means you want to play slow, but we don't. Uh, we, we want to we run. We want to play in attack mode. And if anybody remembers the game, that was what separated us in the game because we were being outplayed by a good, well-coached team. Um, and Husanovich was making every shot. Um, so we, we, we just, uh, uh, we, we got to put it together. But uh, I can tell you today, we're going to be great on defense. Who are your, I mean, go through your bio. It's a who's who of, of where you've coached as a head coach and assistant. You mentioned the strong ties here in the Lone Star State. Who have been your greatest coaching influences? <laughs> They, they've all influenced me on some level. You know, I got my first job uh, at Niagara University at a time when the GA position was broader because um, I was the strength coach. I was the academic coordinator. I was a graduate student. 
I did film exchange and I had on the court responsibilities and I was, but I was making $3,000. So it was all worth it. <laughs> um, but, uh, the guy I worked for by the name of Jack Armstrong was, uh, almost obsessive in his organization. And I learned a lot about being organized in your approach to running a program. And at the time he was only 28 years old when I got the job, he was the youngest head coach in the country. And uh, so I learned a lot from him. And then I went and spent five years at St. Bonaventure, which is my alma mater. And I worked for one of the best people on the planet in uh, Jim Barron. And his approach to dealing with people and his love and care for kids really resonates in a way that I wasn't sure uh, we had lost some of that in our game, but he's the one that made me feel like you can put your heart into this in, in, a, in a special way. Uh, and when I got the opportunity to go work for Rick Barnes, I got a snapshot, a blueprint for how to build a program. That was where I, the, the wheels started turning on, if I had my own program someday, what it would look like. Um, and I love him, but it's just a special man. If you see him from the outside, you have an image of him, you're, you're probably right. Mm -hmm. He is a special person. The four years I spent with Billy Donovan helped shape my perspective offensively. Um, he's a genius, uh, high motor individual, cerebral, passionate, um, and offensively fun to play for and fun to work for. But offensively, he shaped the way I see that part of the game. So a lot of what we do is a combination of all of those experiences. You mentioned something in there about the, the game changing. Um, it's very different than it was when you started here, but the portal is such a big part of it. What's your overall philosophy about uh, guys to get and develop versus guys to plug in? Because obviously your other stops, you have, you have done a, a good job of yeah. accessing both of those uh, strengths. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think that, those uh, emphasis uh, have to shift. You know, Rice is a unique job. And I think, you know, I think anyone who supports Rice will be concerned. Does this guy understand what he's getting to? This is not Texas. This is not Tennessee. This is not SMU. Um, uh, but but, but I, I don't have any misgivings about what I'm getting into um, because, uh, you know what, I, I'm a little bit cynical about the way the game is going and the way I learned the game under Jim Barron and the small campus environment that was about, I wanted to be on a campus that was driven by academics first because that mitigates some of the NIL stuff and some of the transfer portal stuff because the vast majority, at least I would like to think, and you guys would know better than me, young people that choose to come to Rice oftentimes are making an academic decision first and foremost. Yeah. And young people who make an academic decision are less inclined to leave at the first sign of turbulence because what they have done by choosing Rice have already acknowledged that they are thinking about life after basketball. So, um, and now you want to find guys who have a combination of that mentality and a competitive spirit. And so um, you, can, you can recruit high school more readily because you're getting young men who are looking for an academic experience. And the same thing with the portal. So now it's just a matter, you know, a lot of times you were recruiting out of fear and Scott has experienced some of this. You get Trey Murphy, he becomes a good player and you lose him to UVA. And so you, you're always at risk in this climate. But if your starting point is that people want to uh, um, get a great education and now if they want to compete at a championship level, I believe we can deliver both of that for anybody who's interested in our program. So I think we can mitigate at the very least some of the uh, uh, the revolving door that exists, um, but you know you're not going to be exempt from it. Mm -hmm. And earlier you mentioned the assembling the roster and guys that have gone to the portal that are on the roster now and just guys that haven't. Uh, how much do you recruit them and in a way re-recruit them to try yeah. to, hey, let's stay here? Or yeah. with, I know it's early and maybe an unfair question to ask at this time, but yeah, what are but your thoughts on that? Back to my original point, I think most of those guys came here because they wanted to be here academically. Mm -hmm. So I think in an ideal world, they would want it to work. And I, I wouldn't look at it in terms of recruiting them. I just want to communicate with them and get to know them, get a feel for what they're looking for, say who I am and let them, because these are mature young men, they know what they want and they're going to have a feeling in their spirit whether or not this fits what they're looking for. Um, but they should go into the portal. They should explore their options. That's the way it's set up. Hell, I'm in the portal. 
right? So uh, they, they, they have the right to do that. And they got to go through their process. I mean, this, this is, uh, for me, this just happened on Thursday. So um, whatever their process is, I'm going to work with them and try to meet them where they are. Um, I got some homework to do on who they are as players and how they fit what we want to do on the court. And so uh, it, it should be fair for me to allow them that same space to go through their process. And we kind of go through that together. Of course. And again, constant revolving door uh, as far as things changing across college athletics. But with NIL, do you have an overall NIL philosophy about how that can be used, balancing the academic side of things here at Rice? Or yeah. you want to wait maybe to, to see them? No, I, what, I, what I would say is you don't want to be on the outside looking in of that stuff. And at the same time, you don't want it to drive your program. And I don't want that. Um, I'm one of the first in my family to graduate middle school. And I'm here because of the value of an education. So I want, I'm still old school in that regard, but I do understand the landscape has changed and I'm, and I'm competitive and I wanna win. Um, and there's a sweet spot in there somewhere. And I think academic driven schools live in that sweet spot and you have to try to accentuate NIL or whatever, but have it come up and meet the academic piece instead of the other way around. And so. I'm comfortable with growing in those other areas, but not coming in and trying to compromise what this place is about. How long before you know what your staff's going to be? I know that could take a couple of weeks, or do you kind of wait to see what what I, happens on that? I already know. Okay, good. Yeah, I already know. But, but, the, but the one interesting thing is um, we'll have some Texas guys on the staff, and Chris Kreider is uh, someone that uh, I just rely on so much. Uh, anyone who knows him has been here that knows he's a salt to the earth. Yeah. Um, and as a coach, he's found his voice because I've empowered him to coach. And, and that's what we do with our staff. I want the players to hear everybody's voice. And I want these guys to develop in the way that I was allowed to develop by the guys that we talked about earlier who influenced me. And one of their main influences is what they trusted me to coach. And uh, in doing so, Chris has become a tremendous coach in his own right with a, with a future as a head coach. And, uh, and I'd like to believe that that would be the case with the rest of our staff. Yeah, it's reassuring to hear. I got to know Chris really well, and he's here his first swing through here. But what's the next uh, three, four weeks like for you? Obviously, balance <laughs> the, the presser coming up here as yeah. we speak now in a few minutes, but just balance between moving, uh, hitting the recruiting trail and all that. What, what are the next three, four, five weeks look like? Um, because my staff is together, we can hit the ground running because uh, oftentimes – you spend an inordinate amount of time assembling a staff. So we won't have to do that. So these relationships we need to build with the current guys, we can get right to that. What I've done in the past, and I'll do again, is try to find an Airbnb with four or five bedrooms, and we live together until they find a home. Because I don't want the transition to become a financial burden on my staff. Um, because this is something they should be excited about and celebrate. They shouldn't fall behind financially because they got a great opportunity, right? Yeah. So we we'll, and and living together and coming to work together every day is some of the most fun you ever have when you get a new job, and so I'm excited about that. But uh, that'll happen relatively quickly, and it'll give us some opportunity to be present and spend time with these guys and really get to know them. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to leave anything out. Anything else you'd like to add that we didn't get to already? Uh, no, I, I just you know I, I would just want to reiterate that. Um, I'm so excited about this opportunity. I didn't fall into this. Uh, I didn't take this because I didn't have anything else. Um, this was something that I did not see coming. But when my, uh, my agent, Will Reese, is a great man, does a great job. When he said, uh, Tommy McClellan is going to call you in 10 minutes, I felt like uh, this was an opportunity for me to see if this was really something that I could be aligned with. And... Uh, it took about 30 minutes. That's great. Yeah. Hey, I've added it up before. We do about 70 interviews during the year, so we'll get to know each other pretty well, but I'm excited to meet you, and I can't wait. Appreciate you. you very much. Thank you. First year head coach Rob Lanier joining us here.